in the middle of a day on a Wednesday to spend some time and hear some great rock and roll. So we're really happy to have you here. Here, um, I just wanted to say that uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Tommy Black and the incre incredible staff that we have here at the Viper. Let's hear it for them. Here is so amazing. Remember, the bar is open, so whether you want to have a drink or drink water or whatever you feel like drinking, you can get it there. And uh, and because they came down to work during the day, so please uh, take care of them and be generous. Again, I also want to let you know that uh, it's just great to be able to do these, so thank you for taking the time and coming out. Now, I'm going to introduce you to our second, we did this about a week ago, of course, with Rival Sons, and that was an incredible day, so. Uh, this second one now is with this artist who uh, comes from San Diego, who was, was born overseas in Hungary, and she's here, and uh, she discovered rock and roll, and we're going to oh. talk to her about that, and some of her songs she's going to perform from the new album, Gifts from the Holy Ghost. I'm so happy to have her here right now. So please, let's make some noise for Dorothy. Dorothy, thank you so much. Let's hear it for Dorothy one more time. Come on, Dorothy, thank you for coming up. Thank you. Dorothy, thank you for coming up and driving up from San Diego and coming to hang out with us. Hi, um, everyone. Hi. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Okay, now I can see. <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy, you know, it's funny, I mentioned this and, I, and we've talked about it before. It's amazing that you were born, of course, overseas, but then you grew up in San Diego. Let's talk about how you discovered and fell in love with rock and roll and why music was so important to you. Yes, so I would buy all my used CDs at Lose Records in yeah. Encinitas. I had everything, you know, Audio Slave, Sum 41, Green Day, uh, Nine Inch Nails, like everything I could get my hands on used CDs because they were like a dollar and that's all I could afford and I was like, hell yeah. yeah. So I grew up, you know, and listening to like, The Offspring, but I grew up as a child listening to uh, all my dad's vinyls, Pink Floyd, um, Bob Dylan, like everything. So uh, CCR, I'm a huge Creedence fan. Uh, yeah. The yeah. Road Trip album, yeah. Chronicle 2. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so, you take that on the road still when you go out on tour? Is yeah, you know, I put it all on my phone now, but yeah. <laughs> Which I think is great. You know, you and I have talked before on the air about how, you know, when you're out on the road and touring, you, you just to stay in shape and if you just clear your head, you'll get out and run and listen to music, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I go, I, I literally get off the tour bus, where's the espresso, find some coffee or five, and then go <laughs> jogging and I listen to music and that's how I stay in shape, clear my head, start my day, um, you know, develop the lung capacity for stage. Yeah. Stuff like that. So, because you have that incredible range in voice and powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, tell me about, you know, Gifts from the Holy Ghost, it's such a great album. It's great start to finish. There are so many strong songs on this record. And let's talk about when it came time to start working on the, this, this most recent album. What were some of the first songs that you worked on? The first song that was ever written for this album at the time, I didn't know it, was Gifts from the Holy Ghost, which we actually, uh, my friend Eli Wolfmeyer was touring with us. We were opening for Greta Van Fleet. We were in Spokane, Washington. Washington was on fire, and uh, we were doing sound check, and he starts playing this riff, and so I was like, oh yeah, keep doing that, and I turned my, you know, my voice notes on, my recorder on my phone, and I just started screaming nonsense into the microphone that felt good, whatever felt good. And then um, later I, I went back and listened to it and tried to decode what I was saying and translate it into English. And then, <laughs> and then you know, you know, the apocalypse happened and you know, I was like, all right, it's time for album three. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose my mind, I need to make some music. So we started writing. I, I wrote a lot with Keith Lawlin and Jason Hook and other friends of mine, Trevor Lukather, a good friend of mine, awesome songwriter and producer, he's local. Um, and I was just picking up songs, collecting songs, and then uh, started the journey of recording everything. And then Gifts from the Holy Ghost was the last song to be recorded and finished. It was like full circle. So you never know where life's gonna take you, but you end up where you need to be. And so that's how that happened. That's great. And you came up with the uh, title and some of it while you were basically somewhere in New York, right? You looked yes. out the window? I was in Brooklyn, I woke up and it's like the first thing that popped into my head and I wrote it down I was like, that sounds cool. I didn't know what it meant. I just was like, I think that's the album title. So it stuck. 
It really did. It's great. And you know, Rest in Peace was the number one rock record around the country, number one on KLOS, number one on our countdown. Undo and Approved. It's an incredible song that uh, Scott Stevens, your producer, had, you know, was thinking about some of the things uh, that you personally had gone through in your life. and. Mm -hmm. And, and worked on that song and writing that song. Yeah, he. I love to write, but you know, sometimes somebody has a song that's a gift yeah. to you, and yeah. he had that, and he had me in mind, and I was like, wow, that's like you took the words right out of my mouth. So it felt right, and it, it was such a good record to record with him. Yeah, it's such. A, it's an incredible song. Let's talk about things like a beautiful life. It's on the